Hello friends, my name is Manifesto and today we're going to get right back into our slime phone tutorial series. Today we're going to be talking about tools. <music> Moving on to our tools. Our first two tools are a gold pan and nether gold pan. Now these are rendered obsolete by our automated panning machine. So I'm not really going to cover it except for just showing you the crafting recipe, but it's not really something that we need to make or there's any benefit in making. Our grappling hook is especially useful for navigating all types of difficult terrain, especially in the nether. Just make sure you don't fall in lava. Now the grappling hook is just made with chains, which are just composed of steel, which is just iron, dust, carbon, and iron. And a hook, which is just made of more steel. So the grappling hook is entirely composed of steel. The only real drawbacks to the grappling hook are that one, the grappling hook drops on use, so if it goes off into the middle of nowhere, you actually have to go find it. And sometimes that can be pretty difficult, like right now. So it's always good to have a few on you, since they're so cheap to make. And the other drawback is like you're about to see here, it doesn't prevent fall damage. So it's really easy to kill yourself with a grappling hook unless you have the right armor equipped to prevent fall damage. And we will be covering some pretty cool slime fun armor in the future that completely negates fall damage. Our next item is our smelter's pickaxe. It does auto smelt items and work with fortune, which is pretty cool. As you can see here, we're gonna go ahead and use the smelter's pickaxe. That's two diamonds from that. And in total from four diamonds, we got 10. Now on iron, We've got 11 from four. So it turns previously unfortunable ores into fortunable ores, which is pretty cool. The only real drawback to the smelter's pickaxe is that it requires three lava crystals to make. The ferrosilicon is fine and fairly easy to make. However, three lava crystals can be quite tedious. Our next item is our lumber ax. Now this advertises that it cuts down the whole tree. It's actually quite easy to make, just requiring two 24 karat gold and two iron dust to make that two gilded iron, a synthetic emerald, which doesn't actually require any really important materials to make, and two synthetic diamonds, which are just composed of a bunch of coal. One nice little statistic to know is that a synthetic diamond is composed of a carbon chunk, which is composed of eight compressed carbon, which is composed of four carbon, which is composed of eight coal, meaning that it takes four stacks of coal in order to make one synthetic diamond. So in total, you're gonna need about eight stacks of coal for your lumber ax, but it is definitely worth it. Here I have some trees and it chops down the entire thing. The only real drawbacks are that it doesn't work on diagonals and sometimes doesn't quite get the entirety of the tree, especially when they're really massive jungle trees or really massive spruce trees or anything like that. Our next tool is our pickaxe of containment. It's just a basic pickaxe. It doesn't do anything special except for the fact that it can pick up spawners. Now most servers nowadays have systems in place to where players can pick up spawners, but if the server does not, this is your route to getting spawners. It's pretty easy to make, only requiring three ferrosilicon and two gilded iron, and it really only has one purpose, so it should be pretty easy to make. Our next is our Hercules pickaxe. Now this comes pre-enchanted on crafting with unbreaking five and efficiency three. It's composed of more of that annoying hardened metal and make sure to make this in a magic workbench, not an enhanced crafting table. Now, this pickaxe does exactly what it says it does. It turns ores it breaks into dust. In addition, it actually turns it into two iron dust, which is pretty cool. So this turns into two gold dust. This one is going to not be affected. Wait. So I might have just figured something out. It actually doubles everything it mines. So let's do a quick test. All right, so here's a quick test with the Hercules pickaxe enchanted with Fortune 3, which we can do with auto enchanters. Still gives two. The dusts are still given two per. And I just broke two diamond ore and got 14 diamonds. So yeah, it uh, it essentially applies a times two multiplier to everything you mine. Now, as of making this video, this is true. However, I don't know if it's gonna be patched at some point, but I assume it would be, or it'll be disabled on your servers because it's kind of ridiculously overpowered. 
So as if the Hercules pickaxe wasn't powerful enough, it can also be disenchanted to get that unbreaking five. However, applying the book to another item will not give it the effect of doubling all ores that stays with the Hercules pickaxe. Our next tool is our explosive pickaxe. Now this is one that's enabled on most surfers and is extremely useful as it mines all blocks in a three by three, starting from the center block. So you can use it to very quickly mine out large chunks and it can also be enchanted with the auto enchanter. Now, besides the loud noise, it doesn't really have any drawbacks as it breaks all blocks and does indeed work with fortune. However, it will not work on fortune with blocks that don't naturally work with fortune. The only other drawback to the explosive pickaxe is that it does run out of durability pretty quick. So make sure to have your auto anvil ready. We'll make sure to cover that in the auto disenchanter auto enchanter video. Now the explosive pickaxe is pretty cheap to make only requiring one synthetic diamond, two ferrosilicon and two TNT. Now, if you're not using this for mining, rather it's solely for excavation and you don't want to get rid of stone and other mineable materials, but only the diggable ones, the explosive shovel is for you. The explosive shovel is also really easy to make, only requiring one synthetic diamond, one TNT, and one ferrosilicon, and does exactly what it says it does. So, as we can see, it just mines out all diggable blocks in the 3x3, three three, starting from the center block, but doesn't do anything to the non-diggable blocks. We have the same issue here that it runs out of durability pretty fast. It's worth noting that with the explosive pickaxe and the explosive shovel, with MCMMO and other plugins, when it's corresponding to triggered events such as breaking a block, uh, some effect happens where, such as it drops different loot, such as with excavation and MCMMO, or you get some money, uh, which is jobs, that'll only be caused by the one block you break. All the broken blocks around it in the 3x3 area will not trigger that event. The next tool is the pickaxe of the seeker. Now, in my opinion, this one's often overlooked because people think, oh, the explosive pickaxe is faster. I, it works with fortune. I can just go and make massive tunnels. I don't have to worry about where the ores actually are. I'm gonna get enough as it is. However, the pickaxe of the seeker, while being incredibly easy to make, can be configured in the server settings to adjust whether or not it will point to ancient debris. So it's worth testing to see that if in certain points in the nether, when you're mining for netherite, Will it point to ancient debris? If so, obviously it's something that you want to have on you when you're netherite mining. Next is our cobalt pickaxe. Now, this is one hell of an item. It's really easy to make because cobalt and nickel, which are the two components required to make it, are honestly really easy to make. And the effects are absolutely mind-bogglingly good. By making it, you now have access to unbreaking 10 and efficiency 6. And while this is on an iron pickaxe, it doesn't have to be. With the Disenchanter, you can actually remove it from the Cobalt Pickaxe and get the Unbreaking 10 Efficiency 6 book and apply it to all of your armor, all of your tools, and suddenly now you have Unbreaking 10 on everything, which is obviously really, really overpowered. The Pickaxe itself doesn't have any effects other than that which is given by the enchantments. Our next item is the Pickaxe of Vein Mining. Now this one's also often overlooked due to the existence of the Explosive Pickaxe. However, I find that it is extremely useful when digging out huge veins of ores. Now you're gonna see a lot of these huge veins when we're talking about coal, especially. And coal is so effective to slime fun, I see no reason not to use it if you're not using the industrial miner or anything like that. If you're actually going and mining, I see no reason not to use the vein miner, especially if you don't have access to flight via slime fun or some other plugin. It's really easy to make, only requiring two emerald ore, meaning you have to have silk touch, to a gilded iron and a synthetic diamond, and it does exactly what it promises, mining out entire veins at a single time. However, if the vein is too big, it will not, but it does work on diagonals. Our next item is the climbing pick. This one is also very often overlooked. I personally think for a good reason. It's not exactly the most friendly tool. Uh, it only allows for certain surfaces, those surfaces are most things. However, I'm not sure how useful climbing is, especially given that, I mean, you can build. It seems like something that would be more used in adventure map type things. But in addition, it's also pretty difficult to make. It does require that hardened metal, which is super tedious. Otherwise, it's just two steel and two sticks. And here are all the block types that it can be used on. Another thing that they don't tell you in the crafting menu is that you actually need two in order to be able to use it at all. So if I were to try it with just one, it's gonna tell me that I need two climbing picks. So equipping two, 
I cannot climb this surface. I can't climb this surface. I can't climb that surface. There aren't a ton of surfaces you can actually climb, especially in a naturally generated world. It's really just used for, you know, ice mountains, or if you're deep in a mine shaft, it does give you a nice little boost, but it doesn't make you immune to fall damage. Personally, it's a no-go from me, but I still think it's worth showing every item. The last four tools are soulbound tools. Now these are obviously pretty popular as you don't drop them when you die, and they're all made the same way, two essence of the afterlife in your magic workbench with the item in the middle. Now I know I said at the beginning of this video that we would only be covering what's in weapons, useful items, and tools, but there is one item that is so useful that I cannot physically bring myself to not show it to you. And this item I use on every server that has slime fun all the time. I leave it in my inventory right here all the time. And that item is the infused magnet in Magical Gadgets right here, the infused magnet. Essentially what the infused magnet does is whenever it's in your inventory, if there are any items dropped anywhere nearby, so let's break some sugar cane as an example. So that's over there. If I shift, <laughs> if I shift, it's gonna suck it up to me. For such a powerful item, it's actually really easy to make. It only takes one magnet, which is composed of one nickel, one cobalt, one aluminum, and one iron dust, and four magical lumps and only two ender lumps. Now these magical lumps are tier three, which does require a good bit of nether warts, but once you have a nether wart farm going, it's pretty easy to get enough to make a good amount of tier three. So I highly suggest that everyone make an infused magnet to carry around with you at all times. It is incredibly useful and it saves so much work of having to go and get right next to the item in order to pick it up. All right, guys, I know this video was a long one. I'm going to make it into two just because of how much material we covered. Thank you all so much for watching. If you have any questions, please just leave them in the comments and I will get back to you. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. And if you found it helpful, please subscribe. It helps me out a ton. It's completely free. You can always unsubscribe later and it only takes like two seconds. Once again, thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys next time.